In other modules, we've already seen lots of equations in two variables. We've manipulated them, we've solved them, and we've graphed them, too. We have also seen inequalities in two variables. They look a lot like equations, except that they never have a plain old equal sign. They always have a sign for less than or greater than. You may not have worked with inequalities in a while, so let's do a quick review. First, the signs. There are four of them. And in each case, the point, the smallest end of the sign, is next to the smaller number. With one variable, we can draw an accurate picture on the number line. x is less than 3 looks like this. x is more than 3 looks like this. Put the two together on the same number line, and something very useful and interesting happens. Consider this. When we graph the statement x equals 3, an equation, what do we do to our number line? Answer? We divide it into two pieces, less than 3 and greater than 3. We can say that one equality creates two inequalities, a concept that will be very helpful when we have to work with two variables. Suppose, for example, we want to graph an inequality like this. Using the same idea we applied to the number line, we pretend the inequality is an equation with an equal sign, even though it isn't. That makes it an equation in two variables, and you know how to graph them. Pick a couple of points that satisfy the equation. If x equals 0, then y is 1. If x equals 2, then y is negative 1. If y is 0, what's x? That's right, 1. Plot the graph. It should be a straight line. Was any of this unclear? If so, review the module on graphing straight lines before you continue with this module. Handling the expression as an equation is easy. That's old stuff. But it's really an inequality. How do we graph that? First, we'll keep the graph we just plotted. We have the points that are equal. Our goal now is to plot the points that are less than. Notice how our graph, our equals line, divides the plane into two parts. Remember how our number line was divided into more than and less than? Is the same thing happening here? It is. But which side is greater than and which side is less than? Instead of just guessing, let's pick a test point, almost any point will do, and see if it works or not. We try the point 0, 0. And it works. It satisfies the inequality. Let's try some other points. In fact, Let's start low on the y-axis and move upwards, testing a series of points while keeping x fixed. Notice that all the points below the inequality line satisfy our less than statement, and those above the line do not. For points below the line, our inequality is true. For any point above the line, the statement is false. That gives us a pretty good indication that we have something similar to the single variable expression where the equation, the equals, splits the number line into two pieces called less than and greater than. In the case of two variables, we have a line called equals, which splits a plane into two areas called greater than and less than. The answer to our inequality is all the points under the line, and on the line as well, because the expression states less than or equal to 1. So we just found out that graphing an inequality means drawing the straight line that results if the inequality is treated as if it were an equation and then picking the correct side. Not too hard, right? See how you do working on this one on your own. Graph this inequality. Be sure you pick the right side. Pause the program. When you have a graph, click play again, and we'll compare answers. Step number one. Graph the inequality as if this were an equation. 
An inequality is not an equation, but treating it this way lets us plot the line we need for step two. I choose some points. to plot the graph of the equation. Here are some of the points I used. If you choose different points, they should still be on the same straight line. Now for step two. I have to choose a side, the side which satisfies the inequality. To pick the correct side, all I have to do is test one point. Any point will work, so long as it's not right on my line. I pick 0, 0, which is usually an easy one to use. And here it's false, wrong, untrue, which is OK. If 0, 0 doesn't work, it tells me to pick the other side of the line, and I have my answer. Any point on or above this line satisfies the inequality. Let's make a rule for picking test points. Any test point will work as long as it's not right on the line. If the test comes out true, the test point is on the side that is the answer. If it comes out false, as mine did, the answer is on the other side. I want to make sure you're clear on how we show inequalities on a graph. Remember how we represented one variable as an arrow along the number line? The origin of the arrow was either an open dot or a closed dot. An open dot means not including. So in this example, the arrow means greater than 2. A closed dot means including. So this example means a number equal to or greater than 2. There are four possibilities altogether. Less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. Now, how do we show the same thing for two variables? Instead of an open dot to represent greater than or less than, we use an open line a broken line, to mean not including any point on this line. The side that represents the answer is shaded. Either side might be shaded, and either side could mean greater than or less than, depending on the particular inequality we're graphing. If we wanted to say equal to or greater than, equal to or less than, instead of a solid dot, we use a solid line. That means including any point along this line. A solid line allows equality. A broken line does not. Once again, you have to test which side to shade. Occasionally, we must graph special cases like this one, where only one letter appears in the inequality. x is less than or equal to 5, for example. But we graph it as if there were two variables. The graph is a line, but it only crosses the x-axis in this case. It's parallel to the y-axis because any value for the other variable will work. Another version of the same thing. In this case, we use a broken line to say not including 2, only values greater than 2. Sometimes when we solve real-world problems, we are often looking for the true values for one inequality that are also true for a second inequality. Let's see how that works by tackling this problem. The trick is to solve each inequality as a separate problem. Then draw the graph for each inequality on the same axes, one on top of the other. Go ahead and pause the program while you graph the first inequality. Click play when you're ready to compare solutions. Let's start by looking at the first inequality as if it were an equation. I choose a couple of points which satisfy that equation. By picking x equals 0, I get the y-intercept. By picking y equals 0, I get the x-intercept. I use these two points to plot a straight line. You don't have to use these particular points. Any two correct points allow me to plot the same straight line graph. Since my problem is really an inequality, I have to pick not only the line, but also the correct side of the line. So I test a point to find out whether it's on the right side or the wrong side. The point, 0, 0. The answer, wrong side. So, the other side of the line is the correct side. 
I shade it in and I'm through I'm with the first half of the problem. If you had to watch the answer before you finish the problem on your own, pause the program again and give it another try. While you're at it, follow the same steps with the second inequality. Click play again as soon as you're done. Let's look at that second inequality. I start the same way as before, considering the inequality as if it were an equation. I find two points that lie on the equation line. And before I even graph the line, I check the origin point, 0, 0, to see which side it's on. It's on the side that satisfies our inequality. So I can now draw a line and shade it on the side of the origin. In this case, the inequality is less than, so we use a broken line. The area shaded does not include equals. To finish, we now want to graph this inequality right on top of the other, using two different kinds of shading to distinguish the two solutions. That shows us the final answer, the section that is doubly shaded, which satisfies both inequalities. Question. Could we have a problem with many inequalities at once? And would the answer still be the part where all the shadings overlap? Yes, it would. Here, it's the green area. This would be a good time to look at more examples in your textbook, while what we have talked about is fresh in your mind. And this would also be a good time to try more problems on your own until they seem easy to you. Just use what you know, do one step at a time, and you can work your way to a solution with confidence.